Hello, I'm Mog Morgan for the Egyptian Magic Podcast, here in a special edition, talking with Seth Salem about the forthcoming Thalemic Symposium. You introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, hello, I am Seth Salem. I am a magician, sorcerer, uh, professional, running around the country, uh, talking to people and going to events type person. Uh, I have been involved with several groups over the years, such as the uh, OTO, Gentleman for Jupiter, um, various others as a fringe associate, such as OBOD and the IOT. I am currently in charge of Star Club, which is a magical training system and group based in Bristol with Dr. Halo Quinn. And we co-lead courses. I'm also uh, running the Visible College, which is resurrected and offers both event space in South Gloucestershire for retreats and groups to use, plus also helps to facilitate events around the country, such as the International Thelemic Symposium, which I'm running with Mog Morgan, who is right here. So uh, yeah, that's a little bit about me. I previously ran the OTA body in Glastonbury, called Sanctus Oasis, and I ran the occult conference in Glastonbury for five years. And I've been helping out with other events as a speaker and organizer for uh, probably a good 15 years now. So, yeah, very happy to be here. Thank you, Mark. Can you just read the visible? So the question that came up the other night was the the visible. It's the visible college, isn't it? Not the invisible college. Yes, that, that is that is a pun or play it's on words. A pun. Yeah, because the, there is a thing called the invisible college as well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> I don't know if that re is real or not, but um, well, I mean, that was um, part of what went into the Royal Society, wasn't it? Which is uh, your neck of the woods. Is it really? I <laughs> said. Well, um, Anyway, I thought there might be a kind of modern incarnation of it. All right, so that's the visit from the Visible College. And that's your kind of, which is the most important uh, part of that, do you think? The association, is it the OTO is your main thing or the Visible College or Star Club? Which is your favorite thing? I think the thing that's most important to me is the Visible College. Yeah. The Visible College is the kind of the, the overarching architecture for what I'm trying to do, which is to offer, you know, courses, offer a space, offer organization. It's it's there to facilitate the things that I think are important, which is bringing people together in the magical community, facilitating learning, and um, hopefully, yeah, you know, facilitating groups to do what they want without fear of being run out of town if um, you know, some group or another they're renting space from finds out what they're about and decides to say, see you later. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I should say who I am. I'm, uh, in case you didn't ask, I'm Mog Morgan. Um, I kind of, someone once said, well, they were introducing me that I was one of the movers and shakers mm. of the, I don't, uh, which I thought was quite nice. I got a nice idea. I mean, the, just someone i quite like the idea of being a sort of facilitator or a, a mover yeah. shaker someone who kind of uh puts things together and moves things forward obviously there's my own interest in magic and the occult which is uh and especially from crowley uh which goes back a, a long way but i've always been quite an important element of that would be uh moving and shaking things <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One way or another, <laughs> we should be organizing events and facilitating events. Blessed be the facilitators. That's another thing that I heard once upon a time. Yeah. The people who kind of make things happen, or sometimes they don't happen, you know, but at least they try yeah. to kind of uh, bring people together and uh, organize events. And there's, there's a whole bunch of people, including yourself, around who part of their magical life is. Is is to do that sort of thing. Uh, is is, to, is is part of their magical work, really. I mean, long time ago, I say I was involved with uh, another version of, or version of the OTO in, in Britain, and I think it's actually, or maybe in the AA as well, which is a related organisation. There's this idea that some sort of service 
back to the to the community is 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 actually a, a magical task in one way or another which sounds a bit pretentious but i kind of took it quite seriously really that you should try and give something back i think so absolutely i mean the yeah. you know the, the the first events that i went to were organized by completely different um you know groups and everything so i was kind of drug up in new way on books in manchester you know, got my start there uh, i learned a lot from the people that were just frequenting the shop and having conversations yeah um, I was part of an online forum, Wiki UK, uh, which then became Pagan Network. And um, they had meetups in London and Manchester and used to go down and just, just getting to meet people and, and speak to some of the older hands that were more experienced and could point me in different directions. That was really helpful. You know, like my first proper meeting of, you know, serious people was what, 2002, I think, at the Wiccan and Witches in London, uh, Richmond Park Summer Solstice Bash. It was a picnic in the park sort of thing. A huge amount of people there, you know, some uh, some people that have passed on, like um, um, Steve Wilson. Uh, he was there, waving his sword around, casting circles. Bless his soul, yeah. God bless <laughs> and, <it's>, uh, <laughs> and it's distributed hair, yeah. Um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, and, and David Rankin, you know, I, I learned how to do an LBRP properly in a tree in Richmond Park now. So, you know, these these things are hugely important to me. They have been of service to the community because no one's getting rich off doing speaking engagements. <laughs> you know, like, we're not, we're, we're not, we're not making nice, though, millions of pounds. Yeah, it'd be great, wouldn't it? Um, <laughs> but it's, it's the idea of, of offering something back. And, yeah, and that's like why that. I like, you know, like to see events. And also, I think it's not just offering to the people that are coming after us. It's also offering community cohesion. It's mm -hmm. the chance for people to to meet and cross those boundaries. You know, like as you say, you know, the Typhonians and um, the AA and the IoT, and you know, everybody getting to mix and find out about other people's viewpoints and have some fun along the way. Cross pollinate each other in some way or another. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think there's something in the actual physical meeting, even with all the kind of electronic stuff that we've got that's helped us so much. It's always good for people to actually be in the same space together, and you know, just even if just on that level, it, it's really important for the. It, it is. I think it more so than the, the the magical groups. It's actually the magical gatherings, the impromptu ones, and the ones a year and everything. That is probably the thing that drives the the community, the occult movement forward more than anything else. I think it is is the gatherings. Yeah, and, and, and it breaks helpful. down those those barriers from the online echo chambers. You know, where where everyone's everyone's got a point to make. Everyone's got something to shout about on Twitter, and and the discourse is driven by who can be the angriest about this or who can you know generate the most outrage about that whereas if you get people together in the same space you know stay in yeah if you're in the same space you can't be quite so angry really and you see people no. and you know it, it does change your view anyway yeah. we're here to with in mind that we've we've done it again <laughs> <laughs> kind of, organize a, a gathering the uh, international thalamic symposium which is in uh, just over three months from now and uh, so we're kind of talking to as a way of talking about that and saying yeah we've got this uh, new event well it's not it's new but it's also old there was always a tradition right from the 1980s of having a thalamic symposium in in oxford which i was involved with actually from the right from the beginning uh, and you know, it, sometimes it it comes and goes, and there's a moment of silence, as they say. <laughs> but yeah, no, I don't know. We come to this idea to have another, do another one, so another, have another gathering, and there's a lot of kind of goodwill and uh, feeling about that. So this is to kind of promote that, talk about it a little bit, so we can put it on the internet and let you kind of have an insight. That's the anybody listening to this into where we're coming from and what we're 
hoping to do. So with, with that in mind, as we call it the Thelemic Symposium, do you want to sort of, do you want to say something about what Thelema is then? I guess I could. Uh, so uh, Thelema comes from the Greek word for will. And the idea that you have a will, you have a thing to do uh, on this planet in your current incarnation. Uh, some people will take that as a quite a Taoist approach, um, or quite Buddhist in nature in some other ways. As in, like, you, do you, do you have a way of going? Is this something that you know, like, you're you're doing to then disappear into nothingness or to come back? Um, I like to think that we chose to incarnate with something to do and that finding out what that is and doing it will make the universe better and if the universe likes what we're doing that'll make our lives better so it kind of helps i've always seen it as the idea of a, a river that flows and if you're stepping into the river the further you get into your magical practice, the further, you know, your Thelemic practice, in, you know, increases, the deeper you're wading in and you can go faster with it. But also it's harder to go against it the other way. So if you've only got, you know, if you're only up to your ankles in it because you've done some, you know, uh, Libra Rash and you've, you've thought about reading a book or two, right? You can walk against the current quite easily. But if you've thrown yourself right into the deep end and you've, you know, done your various workings or self-initiated or taken initiation with an order then you're going to find it really hard when you're waist deep to, to start wading backwards upstream um but if you go with the current if you go with the flow of the universe then things are going to move in the right direction hopefully sometimes you have a self-planted rock that you're going to smash yourself on but that's another story <laughs> but you'll carry on well, I say the only uh, thing I would add that, yeah, Salema is this, it's a bit of a mouthful, really, but uh, well, a bit of a high polluting term that maybe if we just sort, sat down, I don't know, if you, if you were choosing terms for a kind of magical current, maybe you might choose something a little bit less obscure, but one thing led to another, we've got this name for a kind of a uh, particular type of magical current which maybe we should talk about a little bit more that obviously mm. comes initially it's, it's actually quite an old word but you know it's yeah, brought and, back into use if you like by by alistair crowley yeah um, and don't forget you know um francois rabelais brought up the idea of the abbey of Thelem in gargantua which is why we are going to have the wonderful uh, dr angela puka talking about Rabelais and Ithilin at the International Symposium, International Thelemic Symposium 2024. Tickets are available. No, that's, that's a good, that's a good that's link. So, so one of the, yeah, you might think, why are we having this sort of talk by a very kind of high profile, good speaker and everything like that, or, but he wants to speak about, straight away, we want to speak about Rabelais, which is this kind of old thing I don't know when, ages ago, <laughs> a novel in in a novel in, in France in which there's this this story. But but you're right, they in the end, in this adventure and stuff, they go to this place called the Abbey of Thelema, where they kind of live. So it was obviously an influence on on Crowley and uh, part of the history of the term itself. And it's it'd be interesting it's, it's very important in fact to kind of work out what is this weird philosophy that we've kind of yeah i said the words weird but once you go into it it leads you into all these weird directions and quite deep back into time and stuff and that's mm -hmm. a few hundred years i think to the rabelais and all that kind of novel stuff and everything but it's it's full of philosophy and magic yeah, and we can we can go back further as well. I mean, one of the earliest appearances that I've I've I found anything esoteric is in um, you know you you sort of uh, classical stoicism talking about the will of the logos, you know, like the the spark of the divine that's that's got its thing to do. And kind of you know in in my sort of magical framework, the the idea of the plan. And I'm quite I'm quite a gnostic, you know, person. Um, you know, Flavius describes a neo gnostic religion, and um, you know, like the, the idea of the will of the logos, the idea that there is there is a plan, there is something, you know, the universe can be better. 
Yeah. Uh, it's that, uh, that Wonder Woman 1984. I mean, <laughs> the universe is good, but it could be better. <laughs> so do your will, sort it all out, fight the demiurge, have pancakes. You know, that's there you go. So it goes back even further, doesn't it? It goes back to the, even the Roman world or at yeah. least because uh, it's Greek word, word as well. So it's it's got this. Yeah, it's a good one. You know, it's got uh, surprisingly it's been this secret underground movement in a way or or philosophy or ideology kind of weaving its way in and out of the whole kind of Western culture and certainly the magical side of it. So it's. It's it's worth get, getting to know something about its its history and that's uh, and and the importance of it as as an idea, which is one of the things that are going to come out with some of the speakers. Do you want to say something about the relationship between Thelema and Alistair Crowley? Sure. Go Don't on. Worry. <laughs> you try. Don't worry about it. <laughs> whenever, whenever whenever you talk about Thelema instantly you can tell who like, there's sort of like three camps there's there's the people that know about crowley and kind of don't care about that so much as what the actual magic practice is there's the people that know about crowley and think he's the best thing since slight spread with jizz on it and then you've got the people who think that crowley is the you know the wickedest man in the world and black magic forever and and you know a curse of beyond the aeons of Peppa Pig or whatever. And then, you know, I remember the first uh, Gnostic Mass we wanted to run in Glastonbury, which I think was it, it was in the assembly rooms. I think it was the first occult conference I did in 2014. And I have uh, some friends who were part of the trustees. And they told me afterwards that it was a big bun fight during the meeting when they you know had to sign off like you know the, the different events because a bunch of people threatened to walk out because we we're going to be doing dark magic by the satanist alistair crowley in the assembly rooms and um i was i was very very grateful that my friends sort of pointed out well first of all that's that's not actually what a gnostic mass is and secondly they'll be tidying up after themselves and thirdly if you think your magical practice is so good we'll go in afterwards and cleanse the place they shut up up. <laughs> okay, so there's this very ambiguous character of Alistair Crowley, which which lies behind, who came up, who started using this term Thelema, and is, I don't know, some people really hate him, and some people realise that, you know, he, he's probably like his ideas probably lie behind an awful lot of what they call the magical revival in the, the current yeah. world. There's so many different things that he kind of brought to the fore and was interested in so just in terms of being interested in crowley and the sort of things that he was interested in you've got a whole lot of stuff that you can talk about in a in a conference and all the rest but as I say it's a love hate figure i i think you have to say some people as you say don't don't try and separate the two say so, you know you can be into Thelema or you can be into Crowley or they hate the idea of being called a, a Crowleyite you mustn't be a Crowleyite yeah I'm, I'm, I'm not, absolutely I not mean, you know, well, <laughs> personally but some people really don't like that that idea and Crowley himself is quite a uh, divisive you could say either a divisive person or a complex person he's got lots of contradictory views in himself well, I think I think there's a there's a few things to, to say about that. So first of all, you know, Edward Alexander Crowley was a product of his time, his his class. You know, his, his family that were rich, part of the Plymouth Brethren, and owned a brewing company. You know, they they had a lot. They, that that has a lot of influence, um, and also of his his character because his character informed his education. You know him tossing off quite literally at Cambridge and running all over the world and getting to do this that, and the other and the, you know, the pyramids of Giza and go off to Delhi and so so the actual thing that went into forming Crowley as a, as a person and a personality it, it is complex and it's you know and, and looking at it from you know 100 and like 20 30 years later is going to be difficult but also, he wrote extensively. He 
journaled more than most people will be able to, you know, sort of read if they're trying to hold down a nine to five job and what have you. His capacity to write was immense and he did it over such a long period that, you know, God, if I think back to something I wrote 20 years ago and whether I still agree with it now, if you if you have that much writing and also that much magical development, then you're going to be able to pull two contradictory quotes, possibly from a week apart, but possibly from 30, 40 years apart, is what Crowley was writing. And that's why, you know, Magic Without Tears, or Uncle Al Explains It All, is such a different position from, you know, when he was writing things like Simon If. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's, that's something that's really important to bear in mind. It's, it, you know, there, there's no homogenous snapshot of Alistair Crowley that you can take as the definitive position on Thelema. You know, do you take him when he had first received the Book of the Law and he was, you know, having a, a, a manic writing phase? Do you take him at the end of his life where he sort of reconciled it all, but he's a bit sick of it? Or do you take it, you know, when he's at the height of his shenanigans, like having the um, battle of, you know, Live Street and, and you know, trying to take over the Golden Dawn? Yeah, you know, there's, there's so many bits to pick at. I think you need to look at some of the through lines and, and really work out your own approach to the system rather than just relying on what Crowley said. I think you're right. I think that's that's definitely worth taking into account. I, I also personally as well like the idea of, you know, this plurality, these diff different views. And I think there is, even if you take the different timelines, it probably, even on a sing single day, there probably has found it difficult to get it, as I say, it's the law of the jungle versus some sort of disciplined social justice kind of agenda. These two forces mm. seem to kind of interplay between Crowley's life, really. So it's possible to see him as, you know, quite an unpleasant philosophically char character, or maybe people like that point of view anyway, but the law of the jungle, some people, that's ambiguous anyway, or someone who is actually into social justice in the way of Martin. So the, the it's not, it's it's the I like that about him. I just say that the fact that he's not one view, you know, that yeah. he's vacillating in some ways. And you'd like to think that, you know, if, if we're doing serious magical work, mm. then over the course of time we improve as people. And yeah. that, you know, there there is there is a point to that sort of self-realization self-actualization self-improvement you know the, the sort of yogic qualities of you know moving to, you know towards a, a higher state of existence and enlightenment <clears throat> you know that, that can be true of crowley and of course everyone can fall off the wagon or get crushed under the wheel of some sort whatever you want to call it but you know the, the, i'd like to think there's room for improvement i like to think that i have room for improvement I, I, like yeah, i've definitely done some improvement in the last few years um, it's all downhill <laughs> no i think you know, i think you hit upon a good thing though is the the practical side of it it's not just philosophy and uh, and mm. words the, there's this weird thing of there's a combination of lots of words but also with this sort of practical stuff. And in the symposium, it's not just all words. There is a whole thread uh, within it of kind of learning some of the practical skills. Uh, I say when I first started myself, that, uh, you know, people, when I, it was just on a practical, people like getting together because I said, oh, well, I never knew how to pronounce that name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that word, you know, this, you read it in a book, some weird thing you're supposed to do in the pentagram or something, you know, I've got a clue how you, and, you know, then you sort of listen to everybody else thinking not to make a tit of yourself, you know, oh, so uh, that's how it sounds, you know, uh, whatever. Waving your ass thing. So it's, it's, a, it's uh, the practical side. You have to do practical magic to really get into this philosophy or mm. this, this way. It's a practical system, and that involves actually doing things that normally we think of as, quite weird things to be doing these sort of ritual activities and the same work for the symposium we're kind of reflecting that i guess in the fact that a uh, whole thread is is practical and we've got various people uh who will kind of be 
workshopping various bit as far as possible within this format you know it's more like giving a taster of things or or working together yeah. with people so that you and over the years that we've done a trend at these events and other events as well often it's the the, the practical things that people learn to do with a certain type of meditation or song or mantra that really does stick with them as well as being some of the most useful thing to you know to get a real hands-on idea with things so that's something we're going to be doing in the in the symposium there's a whole thread of very yeah. interesting bits and pieces i mean there are, there are kind of four tracks that the we've, we've track got running through you know, the old yeah. track the tape recorder is making a comeback yeah get your boog out mug um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we've, we've got kind of four tracks so yeah you're right so there's a there's a big focus on the workshops on the practical that's why we're doing the double workshop blocks um so we've got the three workshops there's going to be jason reed talking about Taoism for magicians as we say flame has a Taoist current to it you're going to be running egyptian serpent power with uh ditty and i'm going to be uh, running a workshop on creating group ritual uh, crafting group ritual with some of the guys from Star Club, which we'll showcase in a mass at the end of the day. So yeah, all practical things. The actual doing bit, the verbing, you know, of of, of magic. Um, but at the same time, the lectures are also in their blocks. So we have the practical lectures on you know magic itself with Callum McLaughlin and Alan Chapman talking about the will and the HGA that's kicking us off. We have the historical block where uh, we have Keith Reddy and Stuart Cleland from the Boleskine House Foundation going to talk about the history of Boleskine, past, present and future, how it was used by Crowley, what's happened after Crowley and what they're looking to do with it now. We also have the wonderful Caroline Wise talking about Steffi Grant. And I'm really, really pleased that um, you managed to get her in to speak about that because that's going to be a brilliant lecture about someone who's, you know, often overlooked between the, you know, all the, like, oh, we don't talk about Kenneth Grant, and like, oh, we love the Moe's own and tentacles, and, like, you know, the, you, you've missed Steffi out there. And then, of course, we have the uh, philosophical block at the end with our two doctors, Dr. Halo Quinn, talking about the phenomenology of encountering Babylon. And as I mentioned earlier, Dr. Angela Puka, who's be speaking about the Abbey of Lima. So I think we have a really good spread. Whatever your interest is, if you want to be purely philosophical we have something for you if you're interested in the history we've got something for you or if you've got you know your, your practical concerns or you want to really dig into the technology and the workshops i think we've got something for everybody mm -hmm. and just go at the end so i was talking to um some of the iot the other month who said they all remember the famous discos from the Thelemic symposium in the 80s and 90s <laughs> dave lee can't be with us that weekend but uh, he's very <laughs> sad because he said he used to get on a minibus from sheffield with the iot to come down to oxford for you so so um why don't you, you know, tell us a little bit more about how the Thelemic symposium first started and what it was like in the good old days well i said as i said we, we I think it was after some event pro from our magical group at the time that we were kind of recovering from a hangover the next day. Otherwise, we'd probably never have thought about this. And someone said, oh, why don't we? It's really good meeting people one on one. We do people come and visit you and stuff and you go and visit other adepts. But why don't we kind of try and facilitate more people coming together to sort of just to swap ideas? But it wasn't that. There was, it wasn't that common a way of doing things. There were a couple of other magical trends in existence at the time, like the the green circle, I think, and maybe Alan, Andy Collins was was just starting to do his psychic questing things and everything mm -hmm. like that. But for the kind of more much more occult type thing, it wasn't. There weren't that so many forums really, and not so much. To, to, if anything, it would be kind of too historical, you know, there was always a distance. It wasn't really kind of based around actual practitioners, you know, obviously you have to have, it's, there's an overlap, you want to know kind of the, the, the people who've hit the books and the research and everything, but you really yeah. want people who, who are committed to that. It was kind of weird at first as well, that people 
to be in a public space and actually admit that that, that they did that you know that they were doing magic and stuff <laughs> this was a bit strange uh in fact i think at the first first symposium someone that that's what it's in oxford and there's lots of sort of well-known academics and i think there was there was this academic uh, old name coming down the corridor and in his book he said oh well people can't really be into magic nowadays there's just no no cosmology and no basis for it and i thought but that's the guy we just about about 100 magicians just walked past him uh, <laughs> in the corridor <laughs> I, I don't think he'd know cosmology if he kind of i don't know if it hit him on the head so that was yeah it was ages ago and we it was popular and you can you realize there's quite a lot of different topics like with the one that's coming up you can't there are lots of people that we'd like to speak and you know if it works out hopefully it'll be another time yeah i'd, I'd so love it to be it, it's the same then there was there were loads of people and then the, the workshops there are also people who are quite well known now who came along and did their first outing or attempt to sort of put something in workshop form people like uh, andrew trumley and uh jan freeze the ones that spring to mind but all sorts of, of people i think there are kind of more people who remember going to it than actually came <laughs> so it is so it's like an urban legend really uh, one way and yeah it just kept going and obviously other people kind of want to do it as well because you can't you know there's there's, there's currents i think there's always this idea as well that because there's potential for conflict between magicians tend to be quite conflicty type people yeah i like you know it's sort of magical battles and everything plus all the kind of i don't know the kind of there's all sorts of reasons that people have fallen out with each other one way or another over the years certainly in terms of magical orders and everything like that that you know it, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be the only a tradition in which you get people in groups that fall out with each other and hate each other and all that sort of stuff so there's always an idea that yeah we know that we don't all see eye to eye on this sort of stuff and don't agree with each other but you know we, we're we are in fact a broad church right if we're a church we're a broad church a very very broad church which is yeah. the Gnostic church so it, it, there's an element of bringing everybody in a, across the different all the different fragments if you like bringing them all back together just to sort of interact with each other in one way or another so it does that so for instance in the program i think we do have something so alan chapman would you would you say he represents the the chaos magic element of things no i i no i think kevin kevin Glover is is much more on the, the the chaos end of of the business you know he's um um very much in, in that world but you know practices you know his, his own will alan chapman i would describe as probably the most free range of the of thelemites range <laughs> um, you know he probably wouldn't describe himself as a thelemite necessarily but you know his uh you know magia process you know, his his contacts his order that he's he's created from that um, and his, his intense work you know with Duncan Barfoot on the Baptist head back in the day, which is being reissued by uh, or printed by Aeon Books, should plug that as well. Um, you know, like all, all that incredible work that he's done to, to make that contact and, and receive and to then distribute that. That's that's a very you know, that that's a very free range, you know, almost uh, Crowley with a better beard kind of a thing to do you know it, it's I, I think it's fantastic you know what he's done and what he's achieved i know several people who are, are direct students or um you know one step removed and um you know nothing but good things to say about what he's set up so yeah i, I would i'd say he's almost very important as a figure who is not you know far removed from a crowleyite but who is doing the work mm -hmm. that's that's kind of what's most important to me because you know i feel that some people try and copy what crowley did mm. or try and be like the next crowley i feel some people um specifically try and react 
to Crowley. You know, so they so that well, I'm 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 going to be spookier than Crowley, or I'm going to be more scientific than Crowley. Um, but I think what Alan Chapman has done is is to say, that, right, from first principles, what what is this contact for? What is you know the the aims of the AA? All right, well let's let's just do that and and kind of forget about Crowley. Right, oh, I think that's pretty cool. So. Yeah, no, I kind of go for it. I like all these different things. Let's see, the thing about Crowley is that he was into so many different, almost any tradition that you'll find, like I was thinking specifically, is that chaos magic might, people might say, what's chaos magic got to do with Crowley? Because it does, right? You know, it's, mm -hmm. but you, you, that needs to be, it's one of, it is a kind of, I would see it as, as a, an outshoot of the Thalemic tradition. But that was the thing about the symposium. It's kind of, I like the fact that it has all these different trajectories coming from, from Crowley and Thelema of uh, yeah. years ago. That you know, almost any magical tradition now will find a way that they can connect with 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 that that past, which is amazing. You know, I say he is definitely. You know, he's a, such an influence on these different things. So uh, as when part the first. The first conference I ran in 2014. Yeah. Um, that was subtitled Organs of the Body of God. Not massively catchy, but never mind. Um, and that the idea was to bring sort of five different initiatory orders, obviously that five different initiatory orders together. So that was uh the OTO, the IOT, yeah. uh, the Order of Bards, I and Grow Druids, I God, um Alexandrian Wiccans, and uh, Helios, which is a legacy Dion Fortune tradition from S SIL to SOL to Helios. And four of those five, everyone apart from Dr. Andy Cooper speaking about Dion Fortune uh, and her traditions, the others, Wicca, Druidry, Chaos Magic, and the OTO, all said, like, I'll, we owe most of this to Crowley in some way, shape, or form. He was pivotal in either creating the sort of systemization of magic, which became more broad based, bringing magic into public consciousness, uh, developing the the kind of like the codifying the rules or publishing the correspondences that allowed the other groups, you know, to, to kind of like be built, not not entirely, but, you know, as a foundational building block, you know, Crowley was massively involved to that. So I don't think we can just overlook or ignore Crowley's impact. Um, you know, I, I had uh, Julian Vane and Nicky Weird speak at, at that conference and, and you know talk about the, the development of chaos magic from there. Um, of course, very recently, uh, Peter J. Carroll has put on his blog that he's uh, uh, seen that we've uh, reorganized the International Thelemic Symposium, and he said that everything that needed to be said about Thelema was said in mine and his little uh, back and forth essays in 2014 on the blog of Baphomet, um, which I'm not sure if that was a uh, like doing as a backhanded favour by telling everybody not to go, so all the people in the IoT that don't like them will say, oh, we're definitely going then. So uh, tickets are available. Um, <laughs> but, you know, like this, I think the the that's an example of like the, the polarising nature of, of Crowley and putting Crowley onto Thelema necessarily. Um, but I think, yeah, I think it's it's important to realise where things have come from. Indeed. Okay, so I don't know what else has probably covered most of the ground now. Are there any particular speakers that you want to kind of mention that we haven't mentioned? I think you sort of went through most of them. What's going to be your favourite thing? What's the one you're most looking apart from yourself? <laughs> well, it's, it's definitely not myself. Why not? Yeah. Definitely, definitely not. I'd myself. go see me if I was me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, as, as I said, <laughs> something um, like that, you know. I mean, I. But go on. I think, I think I'm really looking forward to um, seeing Alan Chapman's talk. If I didn't like, you know, wax lyrical enough earlier, um, because it's uh, he's somebody that I've wanted to meet for a, a long time. He's been absolutely lovely, you know, in the emails that you and I have had with him. Um, uh, Big fan of his work, so it'll, it'll be interesting to see, you know, the way in which he presents that. And he's kicking us off. Um, Kevin's a really good friend, um, as is Halo. Um, so I kind of I know 
a bit about what they're going to be speaking on, but also I, I really like their presentation style. So that's that's going to be fun to see. I mean, there's you know th there's so much to choose from. And I think we're really, really fantastically lucky in you know getting people like Jason Reed and Angela Puka in to you know to, to give lectures where they wouldn't necessarily um, you know be found at a Thelemic event otherwise. But they've agreed to come in in, in good faith, and, and I'm very excited for what they're going to bring to it as well. As you say, it's a it's a broad church, and um, we're packing it to the rafters. And, and at the end of the day, of course, which is always what you were alluding to, always quite important, uh, even for people who don't always like the talking head stuff and all that, stuff, is there's, but we kind of hang out together and there's a social of some sort, that's, which is yeah. almost as important, probably perhaps more important than, than anything else. So I mean, we've got, uh, we're staying there, we've got a, quite a nice social evening lined up. Uh, whether we're going to do, Hopefully we'll have a chance to dance. I think dancing is quite good, you know, as well. Honestly, the amount of people who have said the disco <laughs> at the old Thelemic Symposium was the yeah. best thing since sliced bread. Yeah, yeah. that Florence Far event we were at, you know, there was loads of people talking about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, the learning happens in the talks and the workshops, but the understanding happens yeah. at the socials. So yeah. yeah, so if you're coming and yeah, pick up a ticket while they're hot, yeah. um, stay through to the end. Come and hang out with us, have a chat, get to know the other practitioners uh, and the other people who are interested in, you know, in magic generally. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. yeah, and have a drink with each other and with us. Buy us a drink, that'll be good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, have a dance and uh, we've got Oriel, I think, is coming and doing a performance as well. There'll be kind of like a mini cabaret and uh, Sharon Krauss is going to be doing a performance of uh, Neuberg's poetry set to music with Neuber being Crowley's collaborator and, and lover at, at some point in his life. So that's really uh, quite an uh, amazing thing in its own right, I think. It's going to be an excellent show. Really so, yeah, that's, that's the evening and have fun. And if you manage to survive the night uh, and end up in Oxford in, in the next day, I think we might even do have an informal get together or something like that one way or another. Yeah, because um, because you you've got your uh, secret tour of the Ashmolean. <laughs> Not so secret. Magic <laughs> in the Ashmolean. We're going to do magic in the Ashmolean or occultism in the Ashmolean. Just not yeah. too, too, you know. Strange. Yeah. So if you so if you're bored of going there, to the though. British Museum to go and see John Dee's scrying mirror, come to the Ashmolean and look at some Egyptian stuff instead. <laughs> There's Egyptian stuff and we see John Dee's portrait, of course, and uh, not, it's not the scry mirror, it's it's the Enochian tablet and stuff yeah. like that. Anyway, there's all sorts of weird stuff. We'll find something. Don't you worry. We'll perfect, yeah. <laughs> bring a friend, bring a hangover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, so... Uh, um... Get with us. Anyway, <laughs> make it up. Uh, okay, so uh, if... Uh, yeah. The, we'll put a link on here. You know, you can go to what you can remember it's one. It's thelemic-symposium.co.uk. Yeah. Don't know why I'm drawing it in the air for you. More, well, put, put, yeah. put the thing across as a, as a banner here. Thelemic-symposium.co.uk. Yeah, all that sort of stuff. And yeah, I think through to the website for this ticket, and that'll be good. Yeah. Grab a ticket. Right. We're doing them as full days, and we're doing them as the speaker blocks or the workshops. Yeah, so you yeah. can uh, pick and choose your own adventure. Yeah, go for it. All right. Well, we should see. Do what thou wilt should be the whole of the law, and love is the love love law. Love love under the Absolutely. I'll um, well, I'll, I'll see you very soon, Mog. I've got some thelemic engagements coming. I've got a Gnostic Mass next weekend, and um, you yeah, know, I'm doing some of the talks and bits. No, I really appreciate you asking me to have a chat like this, and uh, yeah, always always a pleasure. Let's do it again. It was good fun. Take care. Right. See you soon. Bye.